All right, people, welcome back to some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Tier Draft League. So this is Season 2, Round 1, Match 8, the final match of Round 1. And we still have 14 more rounds to go, go not even including the playoffs. Holy crap. This is going to go into 2018, people. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy. So I got a great match for you guys today. Today we have the Crow Black Lightning in the National Division with the Captain the Noodle Monarch versus the Yugo Crystal Clears in the UDS division with the captain. I hate Angela. 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 Oh my god, I can't even say her name. Angela. Uh, they're both playing tier 3. So tier 3 Zephyr versus tier 3 Baby Raccoons. This is the deck that each selected for the tier 3s. Keep in mind, this is TCG only, so Zephyr does not have all the new uh, Zephyr cards that uh, were not out in the TCG as of the end of 2016, but hey, the deck was still selected, and uh, uh, Baby Raccoons as well. I mean, tier 3 is tier 3, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you think will get you points in the W. So, uh, it doesn't matter who will win here, uh, they will both, whoever wins will still only be rewarded one point, but hey, one point is better than no point. So, I am watching this blind just like you guys. I do not know much about either one of these two decks, how they're played. Uh, but this should be interesting nonetheless that uh, it doesn't have to be top tier or meta. It could just be a sort of casualist duel. I mean, points are points, right, people? Points are points. So uh, if you guys can, be sure to support both of these guys' channel. Uh, the links are in the description. Just go ahead and go ahead and click the description button and then bam, their channel will be there. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button for the channels and support. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So uh, opening hands, I mean, if I'm looking from a Shadal standpoint, this is you know, the Shadal Fusion, uh, you know, if I hate Angela goes first with Raccoons and does a possible, uh, you know, extra deck play, then the Shadal Fusion might be good. But I know that this deck can go into Nichiria Beast, and that might be able to seal it. If you can go to Nichiria Beast first turn and lock it down against a deck like this who loves to use spells and, you know, Pendulum Zone, then yeah, Nichiria Beast would be great. Uh, like I said, this is pretty bandless. Uh, the decks will be upgraded. So then these, of course, is banned in TCG, so it will be removed from this deck. Uh, and it might make a huge factor here. If you can go ahead and make an Echiri Beast and flip up Vandy's, I mean, sh GG, right? Um, Vandy says when the card is sent from, no, never mind, it says it's sent from the deck to the graveyard as well. So if you mill with an Echiri Beast, uh, then, yeah, Vandy just would dealt. But still, great nonetheless. Uh, and, of course, you got the Obedient School, which is a great card as well. Overall, like I said, I'm not, I don't know too much about either one of that. Pre prep is a nice opening I mean, it's a good, great card in general, but uh, I'm playing, going blind. You guys might know these two decks better than me, but uh, hopefully we can get an entertaining duel out of this. So uh, we see uh, I Hate Angela going first with the Raccoons. Like I said, uh, 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 first turn of Cherry Abuse would not be terrible to go into. So we're actually seeing some Raccoon plays uh, right now. Set that and bam, like I said, there is the first turn of Cherry Abuse with the Venom Exemption to set up. Like I said, that would not go amiss. So, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the set of Chi Wen, uh, the Yang Zing, a little bit of Yang Zing, and then thrown in with uh, Zephyr, which is fine, which is fine. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it looks like it, this duel might actually go down here. Oh my god, what is this, an otter? Alright, Tree Otter. Once per turn, you can target one face of monster you control, gain the defense attack until the end of this turn. Uh, I mean, meh, meh. I mean, 3,200 is nothing to scoff at, but it's only to end turn. Now, if it was permanent, maybe we could talk Mr. Tree Otter, but not. And then a Dimension Barrier set, too? Damn. Damn. All right, and yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I see you. I see you. I see you. So, uh, this can make tokens of the highest attacking monster, right? So, these two can attack to create tokens that would be 3,200 because that temporary gain. So, that's actually not too bad. Filling up the vanities now because, uh, I mean... Why not something that floats? And definitely it is something that floats. So not a terrible play. Get that out of here. And that is 2,000 damage to uh, the Noodle Monarch with Zephyrus. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So uh, it seems like instead of negating with uh, Nichiria Beast, the Vanities is kind of one locking it down right now. So there's no need for Nichiria Beast to negate. Because of course Nichiria Beast negates, then Vanities will go. So uh, this is an opportunity for Noodle to do all of his plays. But, um, I mean, to no avail, uh, just normal summon the Zephyr Saber, which is, yes, stronger than the, the, the Ronin, but the Ronin cannot be destroyed by battle if you control another 
uh, while you control another beast, time monster's card cannot be destroyed. Battle or that card effect, and you know these two are blocking each other. Plus, an maturity beast is also a beast type monster, and the struggle is real. <laughs> the struggle is real. So, card trooper looks like it will mill, which of course means that a card is sent from the deck to the graveyard it means Venice does turn off. But I mean, at this point, the struggle to allow, and we're seeing uh, the the Chanbara. Uh, one of the tokens will be summoned at 2200 attack, the highest attack of... Ooh, ooh but there we go. The, the freaking uh, Necros of Valkyrs blocks the attack. Because that was about to be game, but no. No, people, it's not over yet. So the Venities is turned off. Ooh, but the Dimension Barrier to Synchro... Oh, but Shadal Fusion is played to summon Shikinaga. Because you said, you said Exceed. You just said, I mean, Synchro. You said nothing about Fusion. So there is Shikinaga. And uh, Shikinaga might be able to turn this duel around. Uh, being able to run over the Nichiria Beast, and now spell cards can be played. And that is a pretty good turnaround. Uh, we're seeing uh, the Roman try to activate the effect catch to summon the token, which would be 2600, the highest attack on the field. But we're seeing the Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, a very powerful card. Go ahead and put that back in the extra deck and uh, get your float on as well. And negate the other Ronin. Uh, wow, we are seeing... Oh, this is a good duel for two tier three decks. He's, tier three, is this the weakest tier? No, no, because they can still perform and do great plays right here. We're seeing Moonlight being summoned and bounce the Shikinaga back to the extra deck. So, ouch. So, bouncing, just negating, bouncing back to the extra deck. Now, the damage is, is done, uh, but of course, we already know Zephyr Nui is arguably one of the best Zephyr monster. Uh, the damage is taken, but the search will be done. Uh, still 1900 life points, still plenty of life points to come back into this dual setup. Your pendulum scales, pendulum summon, uh, and uh, we might see a play. Oh, and uh, go ahead and summon the herald to uh, negate the plays. We're seeing moonlight go off, but then the herald's like, nah, I can just negate that. No, nope, get the search. Yep, and herald's gonna negate that. Go into uh, Nosferatu, and god damn, our dragon, Dragulus, and Holy crap, this duel has definitely turned around. Now, of course, as we know, this card cannot be destroyed by battle while you have a uh, beast type monster, which is that token at 22. Uh, I mean, you really need to take out the, moon, the, the moonlight. I get it, because I know you really want to kill this token so you can kill the Ronin. Uh, it says the damage is done, and the duel is, is definitely starting to shift. Uh, there is some damage done right there. But uh, I think I don't think I'm gonna have to give it to New Mark and Zephyr. I mean, the pendulum mechanic, the resources. Uh, it's really just nothing stopping him from just going off right now. You know, for R2 is gonna go ahead. Uh, Dragonless is gonna go ahead and set himself, reflip himself. Uh, we're seeing the summon of Yazi, and yeah, the resources they're dwindling. Uh, they're dwindling, and you got of course the nine pillars of the Yang Zing. That's pretty much it. You can go ahead and kite you. That's fine, but I mean, that's still game. You know. That is still game. So, uh, GG. So, game one goes to uh, the Noodle Monarch, despite what you were thinking. Like I said, that was a great duel. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth, but um, as we know, the pendulum mechanic is very strong. So, the extra deck, uh, and really, it it was it was that uh, that Necros of Aquarius being able to block that attack. And he said he turned off his uh, his vanities, uh, and he. He was able to summon a monster that was strong enough to get over the Nacheria Beast, and it went downhill from there. So, uh, will uh, I hate Angela be able to bring this back for game two and three and earn one point for the Hugo Crystal Clears, or will the Crow Black Lightning uh, get one point for two owing with Zephyrus? So let's go ahead and find out. Bear back. All right, game two, people. So, like I said, we will find out whether the uh, Noodle Monarch here with Zephyr to be able to take it 2-0 and earn a point for the Club Crow Black Lightnings or will I Hate Angela be able to bring it back in this game, Game 2 and Game 3 to earn one point for the Eagle Crystal Clues to find out. So let's go ahead and look at these opening hands. So, uh, Angela over here is not the greatest opening hand. It's kind of slow. It really is. It's kind of slow. And, uh, you know, there's no obedient skulls. There's nothing to really lock down. I'm not seeing a way to just bust out a first turn of Cheerio Beast. And that might be the downfall. Well, over here with the Numark and Zephyr, I mean, his opening hand is actually pretty good. You've had Zephyr New Eve, arguably the best Zephyr from what I know. Uh, you got your Oracle to get to search. You got the Shadal Fusion just in case. Uh, uh, I had Angela thinks about touching that extra deck. Uh, you're getting plays off of that. So overall, oh, and the Numark is going first as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's already starting off very strong for the for the Noodle Monarch. 
and Zephyr has been able to just tend to them some of the Zephyr Nui to get you to the nine pillars. And of course, the nine pillars is a negate, uh, pretty much your own, I believe it's like Solomon S card. Yeah. Oh, top deck of the Beating Skull, but no, that's good. definitely going to catch the nine pillars. And then, of course, that is uh, destroyed by the nine pillars, uh, which means I'm yet another search. So, uh, I've seen card triple mill three and attack, but I mean, you know, who cares? It's just GUN to go ahead and float. Uh, we're seeing the mill of Electromagnetic Turtle, so that's not terrible. It really isn't. And Mildred Obedience School, that guy circled back. Replace the Oracle with the Oracle, get that search, because we already know how great that is. And once again, a Pendulum Summon. Turn this into a tuner and get the search of another nine pillars. And there is Chow Feng. Uh, and I don't remember, does it state? Uh, doesn't, what was Chow Feng made with? I believe a light and maybe an earth? Maybe an earth? I mean, if it was made with earth, then that that's great. You know, being able to lock down like that. Wow, and Den Long. Holy crap. Yeah, this, this mm, mm, I, I don't see it. I do not see it, so... I believe this would have actually gotten an effect in this card. There's no one somebody just special on the level two beast time monster from your deck phase them. But I believe this was made with an earth type uh, material, so therefore earth monsters, no effect. So I think this is the game, people. I think this is the game. I think this needle mark is pretty much going to get uh, take it 2 0 and earn one point for uh, the crow black lightning. And just look at this deck. Like, I, I definitely know that the needle mark is the Zephyr Master. It was a great choice for his tier three, and I can easily see him stealing. Uh, points on points on points uh, with his tier 3. And I said each deck has to be used five times, so uh, the Zephyrus will be used four more times in the regular season, not including the playoffs. And if he makes it to the playoffs, I mean, if his, his tier 1, his tier 2s are just as strong in this game, if his strength of his tier 3, he could possibly win it all. So, uh, I mean, I think it might be time just to scoop it up, my boy. Holy crap. Like, not only is Zhao Feng just locking down Earth Monsters, but he also has two nine pillars of the Yangxing set. Like, that's it. That's it. Just go ahead. Scoop it up. Scoop it up. Uh, summon, summon. Go ahead and attack. That's, of course, going to float. So, what, you know, what does that do? It's going to go back to the extra deck. So, to be Pendulum Summoned again. Uh, and I believe that that might be it. Yep. Yep. Damn. There's Horus too. Horus to negate and take. So... And then that's going to do a double synchro into Vaxia to spin back because he doesn't even want your damn card. Uh, Electric Turtles can try to block, but that could be negated uh, because there's Herald there on the field to attack, and then that is game, people. So the Noodle Mark takes it 2 0 Zephyrus when uh, a tier 3 beat a tier 3, so there's only one point rewarded, but one point is better than no points. So the Crow Black Knight Lane gets one point, uh, Yu Gi Oh! Crystal Clears get no points, sadly. But there's plenty of opportunities to earn points in the league. And finally, finally, people, we are done with round one. So, of course, next week I will be back with round two, uh, of, and as well, you'll be getting an update video, kind of like a summary of what happened in round one and the points and standings of everybody in the division so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed like i said round one is over but we still got rounds two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and the playoff so sit back relax and enjoy like i said this is going into 2018 uh you're going to have plenty of content when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Trip Draft League Season 2. And I hope that you guys are enjoying the rest of the content on the Evil Masters channel as well. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you guys can go ahead and support not only uh, I Hate and Dubs, the Noodle Monarch, the channel in the description, but every single Captain's channel, if they have a YouTube channel, is in the description below. So go ahead and check out their content, their channels, and support them because... You know, if it wasn't for them, I mean, we wouldn't have the. They are the entertainers, and I am just uh, the mouthpiece, really, uh, for now. Like I said, hopefully uh, we can pick it up around two with maybe some guest commentators getting our co host uh, on it as well, and uh, just keeping the league going. So I hope you guys enjoy, enjoy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys next time. Uh, round two starting up next weekend. All right, people. Thanks for watching.